The Dallas Mavericks have won two in a row at home, taking on the Lakers team still without LeBron James in the lineup. They're trying to snap a three-game losing streak as they head to Dallas. This game is at 8.30 Eastern on NBA League Pass. So for more on this matchup, we're going to welcome in Mavericks radio play-by-play -play announcer Chuck Cooperstein. Thank you so much for joining us. First, uh, let's discuss this uh, not-so-close rookie of the year race. So what has impressed <laughs> you the most about Luca's play this season? Well, I mean, obviously the poise of a 19-year-old, you don't see this very often. But I think more importantly, it is, it is his strength. He's stronger than I think uh, he looks so that he can get pretty much anywhere that he wants to go to on the floor. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, and, and Kevin probably knows this uh, as well, having played with Larry Bird all those years, it's like the harder the shot, the more he wants to take that shot. And the more likely he seemingly is that he will make that shot. Uh, like the one that uh, he made the other night at halftime in Boston. Uh, the one he made at Portland to put the game in overtime. It just seems like the, the crazier the shot, uh, the more he enjoys it and the more likely it seems like he's going to knock it down. Well, we've talked a lot tonight about the parity in the Western Conference through these first 40 games. The Mavericks sit outside the playoff picture in 13th, but with that parity, a playoff push is possible. What do you see as a realistic expectation for this team? Uh, I think right now you're looking at uh, playing important games in March. Uh, that would be a massive step forward for this team, given that the last two years they began the year 2-14 and 14 and 2-13. and 13. Uh, You know, playing important games, getting those young guys, especially Luka and Dennis Smith, uh, the experience that uh, they're obviously going to need to play in even bigger games down the road is the most important. Uh, if they want to be serious playoff contenders, they're going to have to try to find a way to win on the road. Uh, they have the worst road record in the league right now, uh, obviously tied for the fewest home losses in the league. So uh, these two games that they have tonight against the Lakers and on Wednesday against Phoenix are games that they absolutely have to have while they try to sort out whatever it is that's keeping them from winning on the road. So I've been told I only have one more question with <laughs> you. So I could obviously ask about that road uh, record. I could obviously ask about mm -hmm. keys to beating the Lakers. But I just want to know a favorite Dirk moment, favorite Dirk story as we're all weeping watching him <laughs> hang him up this season. Well, my, my favorite Dirk story is from my first year with the team at the end of the 2006 season. We had played in Los Angeles, uh, won a game. Dirk hit a shot to win the game uh, in, on a night where nobody was making anything, but he, he made one with a half second to go to win. Uh, we travel up to San Francisco and, uh, you know, get to the hotel, and the equipment truck comes, and, you know, all of us uh, iguana types uh, always help uh, unload the equipment truck. Uh, you don't normally see players unload the equipment truck, but there was Dirk slinging bags at 2 o'clock in the morning after hitting a game-winning shot, uh, and it just you know, reinforced what I had known prior to joining the team and obviously what uh, has taken place in, in the 14 years since I've been with the team. Uh, he's th the most regular superstar that uh, I think this game has ever seen, and he is going to be terribly, terribly missed. That probably the highest compliment, the most regular Right? <laughs> you guys can exactly. follow Chuck Cooperstein at Coop Mavs. Thank you again for joining us before the game, Chuck. Thanks for having me, Kristen. Take care. All right, guys. We're obviously talking about a last season for Dirk Nowitzki, but a first season for Luka Doncic. Do you agree with Chuck that this is a team that could potentially be playing important games in March that could be in that playoff conversation? I'd like to say yes, yeah. but I'm not quite sure that they're ready to challenge the three or four teams that are ahead of them right now over the you know, stretch of the remaining part of the season. But they've taken great strides from where they were and the pieces that they've added either through free agency or acquiring Doncic in the draft the way they did. This is an on-the-rise Dallas team. And you know they have an owner who loves to win, so he's going to do whatever it takes to try and make this team better. They have an outstanding coach in Rick Carlisle. Uh, they're going to beat some teams and cause those other teams' problems from getting into the playoffs. Some big losses for teams that go up against Dallas. All right. You know, I think the biggest thing is if they're playing meaningful games, if, if, if you have 15 games left and Rick comes in and says, fellas, look at, looking at the schedule, we got to win 10 of our next 15 games. we got to go 10 and 5 over this stretch. And they're meaningful games because in the playoffs, you play meaningful games. I've seen so many young players just, just take games for granted. You know what I mean? They kind of come out and it's, uh, it's a win tonight, we lose tonight, whatever. You need to play in meaningful games for these young guys. I'd love to see Doncic 
play in these meaningful games along with Smith. You know, DeAndre Jordan was a great pickup for them. You know, Barnes has played so well for them. They're creating a nice little nucleus, nucleus of guys. You know, Dirk, unfortunately, is too old to stay in that. He's, uh, if Dirk makes one or two one-legged step-back bank shots a game, everybody would be happy <laughs> on, his, right. on, his, yeah. on, his, on his, you know, hey, we love you, but you're going away tour. Um, but I, I would love to see these young guys play in games. And, you know, what? one J.J. Berea has played so well for them off the bench. They need him healthy. He's had, you know, he sprained his ankle, and he needs to stay healthy for this team. But I'd love to see this team in the mix and see how Doncic just, just, just embraces all these tight games. He loves the moment. Yeah. Well, let's think about this. I'll throw these five names at you. These are teams I have to get ahead of. Okay, Memphis. Ah, mm -hmm. Sacramento. Lakers. Yes. Minnesota. Lakers. Utah. Yeah. Uh, Utah's got a great schedule. No, I hear you. It's going to be tough. But if they're in that mix, though, Mike, you know, you know how it is. If you're coaching those young guys and, there's, and, and you're one game out and there's three games to play and it means something, it's fun for them. And I think that's what you got to be. I've often said, Red Arbeck used to always say, hey, you're going to be down in the series at some point. We're going to be down 3-1, 3-2. Either win or go home. He said, you better learn how to win games on demand. Go out there and win games when you have to win that game. And he liked it. And, 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 I, and I think that's a huge part of our league. You've got to figure out how you can win games. It's how you prepare, how you go in that game, your mindset of, man, we, we are going to win this game tonight. I'm going to be a big part of this win. And there's something about that. It gives you confidence. And I, I just... I think young players need that if they ever want to try to win a championship or be at that level. That right there, Coach, the flawless transition, as you mentioned, being down 3-1. It helps to have a guy like LeBron James on your team, that's for sure. <laughs> Look at the Lakers with and without LeBron. Very few, I'm sure, surprised by their struggles without him, having won just one game in their last six tries without him on the court. Now, their point total is down, as are their field goal and three-point percentages. Let's listen to Lakers coach Luke Walton earlier. You know, they're trying, but they're young. But, you know, at some point, we just, you know, we need more passion. We need more fight. And that's not, that's not scoring anymore. It's more diving for these balls. Um, yet, you know, communicating loudly. Without LeBron, this, of course, could be an opportunity for the Dallas Mavericks to continue to move up the ranks in the Western Conference. But do you guys see the Lakers as a buyer prior to the trade deadline? I think the Lakers are wide open to see what's out there. Look to add another piece right now. Everybody keeps talking about at the end of this season, right. what are the Lakers going to do? But I think right now with LeBron on the team and his mentality, he doesn't want to finish out of the playoffs. He wants to show that he could take a Laker team and get him into the playoffs. Do I need to say look at the record in Cleveland right now since LeBron has left? He comes here. They're up in fourth place before he gets the injury. And now all of a sudden with him back out, they're sliding back down the ladder again. So with his competitive spirit, he would like to be able to say, I took the Lakers to the playoffs this year. Right, well, because, see, that's the problem, is we talk about next season and the season after because LeBron James is now in town forgetting how good he makes everyone around him, forgetting that he could take this team to the Western Conference playoffs. They're, they're selective buyers. I mean, they're not going to buy an old 1948 Ford, but they may buy a, <laughs> a 2015 Mercedes-Benz. Yeah, I got a little few not? miles on it, you know. I, I just think, depending on who it is, I just think they're very selective buyers. I just think that if they look at a guy and say, this guy can fit our team for the next two or three years, four years, yeah, we'll do it. But they're, I don't think they're going to make a trade for a guy to say, okay, this is a one-and-done year. I think, I think they'd probably wait. But, uh, hey, look, it, I said this at the start of the year. LeBron, if he's healthy, this team will finish in the playoff. They'll be in the playoffs. So it's just a matter of do they have home court or not. He's such a dominant personality, and, and, and the way he plays just affects everybody on the floor in such a positive way. You know, he, he can do so many things, this ability to pass and run. and he just, It's fun for me to watch him. But I just also think that in the back of Magic's mind, he's thinking, okay, we're going to really, you know, if, if something comes along now, but boy, this next summer, we have opportunity to sign some free agents and who can we get. And I think they have a big grand plan there. But if a good player came along, hey, look, at, let's face it. If Anthony Davis becomes available and you can get him, you do that in a heartbeat. Like, you don't mean a good player, like somebody that may have gone to school on the West Coast, somebody who may have been an all-star that can rebound and can shoot threes and may feel very familiar to LeBron James? That has Nothing. similar initials Nobody like to that. mine, that. K, L, perhaps? <laughs> I just, just, just throwing it out there. I, I hear you. You never it's know. Could about. be. It's something to think about.
All right. We're Brings a little Beach Boys music with them. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. Bring that up. I didn't <laughs> want to say that. <laughs> Donovan Mitchell, Giannis Antetokounmpo. A couple of young stars going head-to-head -head jazz bucks. It's one of eight on a Monday night.